I just want to stand and say, yeah, that I, okay. that I appreciate the Lord and, uh, you know, I'm just so thankful that he, you know, didn't give up on me yes. and that he put you know, a desire back in my heart to be here, to be with my family. I missed him so much. I missed him so much. And the only thing that I can say is that I'm thankful. I'm thankful that, you know, he didn't give up on me. I'm so thankful that he died for me. Nobody. You know, I've been in places in this last two years that I thought I would never go back to. And for him to still say, come on. Come on, I still love you. You know, the only thing I can say is I'm thankful. I'm yes, so very yes. thankful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This morning, or this afternoon, let's see if I get it right. I'm thankful to be here this afternoon. God been good to me. I can say that much. And you know, thank God for those two songs. I don't know why he loved me. I, I guarantee you I don't know. But it's his faithfulness. It's his goodness. It's, it's just because he ought to get a good. He, he just he just good. Just want to share with us his goodness. And that's what it's all about. I mean, which which good parents, which good parents are I should say good father that don't want to share the goodness. With their, with their kids. Amen. You know, it, it can't be a good one if you don't want to share with your with your kids. You're not a good person. Yeah. But my God, and you know, he put that in us. He basically, you know, he passed it down to us. Somebody's goodness. Sometimes, you know, we get, you know, what you call it, just crazy. But, but God, he's the same yesterday. Same today. And even forevermore, he don't change. He's righteous. He, he, he holy. He unchangeable. I thank God he that way. Regardless of what we do, he don't change. Sometimes he has to, he has to give us a little good little um, whipping or spanking or whatsoever you want to call it. But when he get done, he's still the same. He's still the same. He don't, he don't change on it. So we, we can, somebody, they used to say back home, you know, you can some people can depend on. If they say they bring you some food to put in your pot, you can put it on the fire and wait on them. Because you know you're gonna have something to cook. I tell you, God is the only one that, that's faithful. That regardless of what's going on, though the river rise, he gonna be there. Though the sound rise, he gonna be there. Nothing can stop him from being there, and he won't make an excuse not to be there. And I tell you, I, I can. That's why I'm. That's why I serve him. That's the reason why. When he opened my eyes and showed me how good he is, and how faithful he is, that caused me want to be somewhat that way. Yes, God. I want to be all the way that way, but it's a sacrifice. But uh, Gary got up last night and, and used that scripture. You know, it's a sacrifice. You know, so many things that we want to do, but we don't want to pay the price. You know, it's nothing you accomplish in this world without sacrifice. I don't think Michael Jordan becomes great at basketball not making a sacrifice. I think when some of the other kids them that want to be great was out, you know, playing and um, goofing off doing something, he was dribbling that ball. <coughs> You know, and, and that's and that's first natural and then spiritually. If we wanna somebody say if you wanna be somebody, if you wanna go somewhere, you better wake up and pay attention. You know, we, we a lot of times we wanna accomplish things, but everything that we're gonna accomplish is gonna take giving of ourselves. Jesus didn't bring salvation to this earth without giving of himself. His father didn't didn't accomplish it by not giving his son, he gave his best. You know, just think about the sacrifice. How many of us will sacrifice our son, our daughter? Not too many. I don't think none. You know, if we do it, it's going to be for a selfish reason. It's not because we love so much. It's because we have some selfish motive to do it. 
And I'm just, I'm just thankful to be here. What God um, done for me, and He opened my eyes, <laughs> little by little. Yeah. You know, somebody said, little by little, day by day. He's changing me. I hope I'm not the same person I used to be. Sometimes it's slow going. Sometimes, wow. Sometimes, uh, brother, I'm saying sometimes you can't kill nothing. Nothing will die for you. He the first person I heard say that. But, you know, you, you want to kill something, you can't kill nothing. Nothing will die for you. But thank God for Jesus Christ. Yes. He's faithful regardless yes. of what happened. Mm -hmm. He's still, somebody say, he's still there. Walking right beside me. He's still there. What the next part of the song say? When I cannot find my way. I may not know. All the hands are. Well, this one thing I know. He never leave me. Or forsake me. I thank God for that assurance. He let me walk beside him. Yes. Even when I'm crooked and dirty and everything, he still says, Come, come unto me. You, you are every leg, you burden on every leg. Just keep on coming. For I thank God for Jesus Christ. I thank God I got a hope. I thank God he's the way he is. Regardless of me, he still have his hands stretched. Come, come. I thank God for him. I thank God that he that way. He didn't have to be. I have a dream last night. I think it uh, disturbed me, but he it did and he didn't. A dream last night that I was I was playing or I was with some people and they done something that I took it the wrong way. And I was upset with them and I want to go at war with them about it. But they was trying to show me a better way. I thank God that he can deal with you in dream. He can deal with you. While they're riding on the street, he can deal with you while they're working. He can deal with you anywhere you are. He can deal with you. I'm hoping you're understanding. When you sleep, I think Job said, he hoping you're, you're understanding and see a sealed instruction in your, in your heart. God is like that. Because, you know, I, I'm just thankful. I'm just, that's, that's why sometimes you come in here and this song, go for Sister Gina, when this song, hobo with, you know, you get in the spirit, you get high in the spirit, and then all of a sudden the preacher get up and start preaching. Because you, you're in the spirit, you're high, you're drunk, and you can receive the message. But if it wasn't the, that song that helped you, to soften you up, you wouldn't receive the message. You'd kick, <laughs> you'd fight. You say, yeah, they're picking on me. But when you jump, anybody can talk to you. And you talk to anybody. Praise God. So God have a way of getting it in there. And only because he good. If he wasn't good, he let me keep on going our whole way. But he's so good to us that he find all kind of way just to get our attention. And when he do, he just get a word in there. My God. So I have this dream. So so after I get a bad spirit, I know it's, you know. So then they start playing this game. After a while, they start playing a game. A pillow fight, basically. And they're saying bunks, they saying bunks. And we have this big old pillow fight. And they was watching me to see if I'm gonna try to basically Overdo it, I hurt somebody. But something worked in my spirit. So hold on now. You know, they just they just try and be friendly. And I took it the wrong way. And it was just, we're just having I mean, this big, I mean, it was so much fun. We were bouncing up in the air. And you know, like we, we could gravitate, we could do just about anything we want to do, and hitting each other and flipping over and doing all kind of stuff. It was so much fun. But at the same time, God was showing me something. And the scriptures come, keep coming to my mind. Where sin abound, grace much more. Where sin abound, grace much more. My God, I said, it was such a wonderful thing. So he was showing me in the dream that, that basically where I get a bad spirit and where I miss it, God give me some more grace to overcome me. I'm telling you, his, it was it was such a wonderful thing. I still feel it. <laughs> you know, that, 
you know, that dream was was something. You know, I just, I just, I just want to pay close attention to what God doing. And God grace, which wherever we find ourselves and whatsoever going on in our life, God grace is still. He's still able to deliver us. You know, he gave, he, it's God grace, you know, it, whatsoever, God give us more grace. That's what that scripture is saying there in Romans, I think Romans 5th chapter. You know, he giving us more grace. He, the, the, the more sin get bad in our life is the more God said, look, my grace still sufficient to brought you to repentance, to bring you back. You know, mankind, we went so far, way, way, way. You know, when Adam sinned, you know what happened? Adam, Adam sinned, messed us up, take us so far off away from God. And then, God sent his own son and said, I want to buy you back. I want to redeem you. I want to make you good again. I want to justify you. So, I'm telling you. My, my mindset from this point, and I hope I don't forget, because the problem with us most time, we forget. Amen. We simple forget what we're supposed to be doing. What Paul said, um, you said, let this slip. What does scripture say? Let let the entire make it slip. He, yeah, he said, what take heed? Yeah. See, we have to take heed. Yeah. We have to take earnest eat to those things. Earnest, earnest, earnest eat. And at, at less at any time we let them slip. See, a lot of times we we get so caught up and we get so <laughs> overwhelmed. Oh, we get so anxious, that scripture. Brother Adams. We get so anxious. And when we get anxious, we're not patient. Impatient, we're gonna possess our soul. See, God, we have to be patient. God said he waited in patience for, the, for the, uh, the precious fruit of the hurt until he received that early and lot of rain. That don't mean it's only two rains going to get. God is such a good God that when you plant a crop, he, he calls it, you, you know, you want to plant it. That's why, you know, early, when people was planting, they go to the moon. Because if they plant three days before a full moon or three days after full moon, or whatsoever. It's, it was a pattern that they do because it most likely to rain that time. So when they plant that way, they're looking for a rain for three days or so before the plant come up. It's rain. And that will cause it to germinate and spring forth. But you might get a little shower in between, but that big shower. And then while the crop growing, you're looking for that big shower to bring you a big harvest close to where everything blossoming or blooming or whatever. Praise God. So we're looking for those early and lot of rain. So we have to take heed. You know, when you plant a crop, you're just going to plant it and let it go. God will plant it and let it go. God also will work it. The problem is we don't pay attention to what God's doing. So we have to keep it in mind that, you know, he also working. He, wanna, he, he don't want to get, uh, well, you're looking for a crop. 30, 60, and 100 fold. He don't want zero, though. Praise God. So I'm, I'm, just, I'm just thankful for what God doing. So I want to keep abounding regardless of what's going on in my life. I want to know that God's grace is there. All I have to do is believe. Brother, I was talking about last night that, you know, that basically, you know, what God, why God. But it's just because when God called you and give you a job. When he called Abraham and said, come follow me. He gave him a job because Abraham believed him. See, so many things that we want to get accomplished, but guess what we want to do? We want to do it in the, in, in, in the, in the flesh. But it's not going to happen in the flesh. I'm telling you, when we sin, when Adam sinned, he messed us up so bad. And there's nothing we could do to redeem ourselves. Justification that we get is because of Jesus Christ. So we have to believe in Jesus Christ. And then he's going to keep on imputing righteousness in our life. I want to, every time I come up against something, I want to keep on abounding. Believe that anywhere sin abound, that grace is going to abound much more. 
It doesn't matter if I have a bad spirit or what's going on. I want to just trust God. Praise God. So I'm thankful to be here. I, I mean, I, I got some scripture I was going to use, but I don't feel to do it right now. Praise God. But but God is such a wonder. Yes. And I just I just wanna I just wanna trust him. He loved me so much. Yes. And I just wanna learn to love myself yes. and to love him. Yes. You can't love God if you don't love yourself. Yes. Praise God. You have to you have to love yourself. We have to get to the place where we love ourselves. We love what God doing in us. Somebody say, Well, that means you know, you you know, but most the problem with most people. Why you see they cutting themselves and pushing needle all over the place and have ringing in, in, in their lips and all things going on because they don't love themselves. You don't look, they don't care about their body. Paint everywhere. Some people take out their shirt, but I'm out, and you can't find a place that they paint. You know, that tells us something about them. But I want to love what God gave me. God gave me this body. He said, Don't you know that your temple is what? It's the temple of the Holy Ghost. Your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. I don't want to defile it. I want to destroy it. I think it's a scripture there in the Old Testament that say that he, God didn't want you to put a mark or, or put, no marks put no marks in your body. Praise God. You don't want you don't want you to go mar your body up and do all kind of stuff. You know, nose ring and all. I mean, how kind of stuff people do to themselves? Well, praise God. So I'm, I'm just thankful Amen. that he gave in me understanding. He, he, he given me understanding. He touched my mind. He caused me to wake up. Somebody says, smell the coffee. Well, the coffee won't do it. I want to wake up to the gospel. Praise God. I want to wake up to the word of God. I want to take it to it. I want, to, I want him to change me. And the only way he's going to change me, I have to take heed to what the word of God said. Amen. So I'm just thankful to be here. I am just appreciate his love. Amen. And I want to keep on bouncing. I want to keep on abounding. Yes. Praise God. I, I want to keep on believing God. Yes. Sister Lena, no matter how hard she's not in there. No matter, oh, right here. Praise God. No matter how hard it's seen, we just got to believe God. That's right. Just got to trust God. I'm tired of trying to work it out myself. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm tired, just sick. I'm tired of trying to work in things out. I want to just say, Lord, if your will, let it be done. Yeah. And yeah. trust him. That's right. You know, sometimes it, it's like I said, the only way we're gonna make it in this life, we have to make sacrifice. Everybody wanna sacrifice somebody else. People wanna sacrifice for their perkins. And that's not gonna do you no good. You have to sacrifice yourself. Yes, yes. Amen. See, we I have to present my body a living sacrifice. Yes, yes. Praise God. Regardless of what's going on, I have to. I have to present myself. I can't present you. It's Satan here and Joe when um, the sons of men, God come to present themselves. The devil show up our soul, but he didn't want to make a sacrifice. He just show up and say, I want to be a part of it. What James said, he said the devil believe and he tripled. He don't want to change. But I want to present myself. I want to bring myself to the altar and let God change me. Because I can't change myself. So I have to show up and present myself and say, Lord, here am I. Do what you see fit to do with me. And let God work. And when he, when he started working, I started singing that song to the devil. Lord, I love the work that you're working in my life. Yes, God. And regardless of what's going on, regardless of how bad it gets, regardless of the pain, I gotta say, Lord, I love the word that you yes. work in my life. Love it. Love it. What the next part said? I love all the ways. I love all the ways you change me. I love this part you cause me to walk upon. I love you and I love what you're doing in my life. We have to, we have to become. We have to become separate from ourselves sometime to, to him accept that. You know, one day I was, I was up here talking and God touched my mind. And some things was going on in my mind that wasn't right. And I said, Lord, deliver me from myself. Lord, help me, Lord. And God stirred me up in the Holy Ghost. He stirred me up. And I was, Paul said he had that whole about experience. 
I have one of those out of body experience. And I pray one of those perfect prayers against myself. Because my flesh, when Jesus said, the spirit is willing, but what? The flesh is weak. He, that's, that's why Jesus had to say what? Father, not my will, but thy will be done. And I find myself was separated from my body. I was praying a prayer that, Lord, you deliver me from myself. And I, I believe that God, I mean, he was anointed and it was a power. And God just cut that flesh right there. Praise God. So I'm just... I'm just thankful to be here. Yeah. I'm going to depend on him. Yeah. I'm going to trust in him. I want anytime sin try to abound, I want to trust God that he's going to keep on bouncing me. Praise God. My God. Just give me, you know, one thing about it, you can't drivel a bar without here. That's no don't have enough here in it. You won't drivel, right? Right, Brother Jason? No, I know you love to drivel. Yeah, but you can't. It, won't, it don't work. But I thank God that I got the spirit in me. Yeah. I thank God that I got his word in me. I thank God that he put something in me. And all I have to do is let God stir up what he put in me. Yeah. Let God keep on quickening what he put in me. And I know that if I just keep on presenting myself and believe that we're sin abound, grace is going to abound much more. Grace is going to do it. It's by grace we say it. It's by faith, by grace, and I didn't do nothing. It's what God done for me. I, I'm, I'm so happy that my salvation not predicated upon me. It's what God done for me, what God doing for me. I thank God. I thank God for what he's doing. Because if it wasn't for him, where would I be right now? If it wasn't for his goodness, where would I be right now? If it wasn't for his love, where would I be right now? If it wasn't for his great mercy, where would I be right now? I'm thankful for Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And I was thinking when Brother uh, Gunter was talking about how that it takes the grace of the Lord. It, it takes where sin abounds or, or ignorance abounds or, you know, in lack of wisdom or anything else abounds. Grace does more abound. And the Lord was bringing back to my mind some things. Uh, the Lord had shown me years ago about a tunnel. I had seen this uh, well, when I was in college. We had to deal with little kids and our, we was in psychology and it was psychology for education. And they were talking about how these little children saw this it was a train tunnel it was about that long or so it was like took up a whole table and they showed that little bitty children would go to the table when the train would go in the tunnel they would look for it where it went in and a lot of them would cry because they thought the train disappeared it's gone that's a, that's the last of it but as they got more mature they knew when it went in this side it was going to come out on the other side and they would go to the other end of the table waiting on it to come out and, you know, that's the way it is in God. When you first come to God and you don't have maturity, when you feel that, like, lack of whatever, you know, it's a trial I'm going through or I can't feel God or, you know, he's chastising me, he's whooping me. I didn't come to God and get delivered overnight and become perfect overnight. So when I come in, he's got to work on things. And when I go through those dark times, those tunnels, where the light goes out, train disappears, all of a sudden I ain't on the white mountaintop waving my flag, all of a sudden it's like, boom. It's all gone. And as a little child, as an as a immature ch uh, saint in the church, I can think that's it. He's gone. Something ain't right. But as I mature in God, Sister Dolores, I'll start looking for him to come out on the other end. I'll start looking for, oh, I'm going through a bad trial. I'm going through a chastisement. I'm going through, you know, a pruning. I'm going through what uh, John talked about when he said, uh, 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 every branch in me that beareth fruit, he purges it. And those that don't, bring, uh, don't bear fruit, he gets rid of them. But every branch that's bringing forth fruit, you've been bringing forth fruit, yes. But he's still going to purge you. He's still going to cut you back. He's still going to make you go through things sometimes that you feel like quitting, that you don't know where, where this is coming out at. But as we mature in the Lord, we can know that if I'm going through this and I endure chastisement with a little patience, I will come out on the other end. Something will happen because he said, uh, uh, 
honor comes before humility and our pride cometh before destruction. So let's look at where we're at. What's coming? Are we in pride? Then you better watch out because destruction coming. But are you humiliated? Well, rejoice because you know what? Those that are uh, those that are humbled, those that are abased, God said he would exalt. So every time I'm going through a humbling period, I just try to endure it with patience. I just got to walk through this humbling period. I got to be humble with God. I got to say, yes, Lord, it's you and not me. You're God and I'm not. And he will bring me out. And over 30 years I've been here. And he has brought me out on the other side. But when we first come to God, it's like those uh, TV preachers and stuff. They seem to think all you have to do is just say, amen, I'm saved. And go, go along your life and be saved. But it's not like that, is it? It's, like, it's not like that. We don't get everything we need. It's not just a decision we make. Salvation is a lifelong process. It's a lifelong process of climbing up the mountain on the rough side of the mountain. I'm going up. But you know what? The thing is, God is doing it. With, like Brother Gunther was saying, it's, it's his grace that's just steady covering me of everything that I'm going through, everything that I've, that I've uh, uh, accomplished in my life. It wasn't because I got down and decided I was going to do it. I can look back and see where God did it. I can look back on my life and see with hindsight how God was choosing those stepping stones for me, those stumbling blocks. He chose those to be my stepping stones. And this, I had a dream last night too, and it was a reminding dream. It was like something that happened years ago, but it was so vivid in my sleep last night, and it just reminded me about how good God has been to me. I remember uh, at the time I was single. This was way back. I was very young, and uh, I had just got been, been here not long, not very long. Sister Mona had just got in church at that time, and uh, and I was going through something. I had been sit down from the pulpit, and I was feeling like one of those days where God was gone. You know, I had been whooped good by the ministry, God, and everybody else, and. You know, I had just, I was going through some hell. That's all the way, only, only way to put it. I was going through some hell. And uh, so anyway, and uh, we was having a noonday prayer at somebody's house. I don't even remember whose house it was. But we went uh, to that house, and I remember where I was where I was praying at. And I remember where this sister, Sister Mona, was praying at. Well, I had got down to pray first, and she came in later. And uh, But while I was praying, I had my hands down, I had my hands over my head, and I was praying to God, and, and I was being very quiet because I was praying about things I didn't want everybody to know about, you know. And uh, I was just saying, God, I can't, I don't know what to do. I need you, Lord, and don't leave me. Take not thine Holy Spirit from me. Because I was in a whooping situation, I'm telling you. And I was saying, Lord, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Don't take my gift. Don't take my calling. Don't, don't, you know, I want you to still love me. Forgive me. Help me. Deliver me from this situation. Deliver me from myself. Brother Gunter, I pray those prayers many, many times. Had to stand. Because I have seen me. God has given me a revelation of me. I have have seen me and I have seen my spirit go totally out the window. I have seen me not be able to handle and control my own emotions. I have seen me go off like a bird uh, uh, like a uh, 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 what do they call them things? Go over the mountain with the tail running, you know? I've had anxiety disorders and everything else. Let me tell you something. I could have been homicidal. I could have been suicidal. I could have been a lot of things. But God showed me who I was, Sister Perkins. He revealed me to me. And so there's been a lot of days I fell on my face and said, God God, you know, I will destroy my life. I will destroy my position. I will, I will hurt people when I go off like that. I will hurt people if you don't help me. I have made those prayers many days. And um, that particular dream last night, I, I, it was a reminder how when I got up from prayer, I still didn't have my answer. But Sister Mona was sitting and she said, Lord gave me a scripture. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their lands. And you know what? I have found God to be faithful. God is faithful and all I've ever had to do is put it in his hands. You know, he showed me years ago, I have a writing. I, I've lost the writing. I, I've got it somewhere, but it, I called it Overcoming My Emotions. That's the name of my writing. It's three pages long. Sister Delores looking at me. Yep, I've shared it with some people here. But God had to show me what to do when my tail would go over the mountain like that. When it, when I was telling Brother Adams last night, there's times when 
You know, an appropriate situation is if, if the lion is chasing you, it's appropriate to run and scream. It's a pro totally appropriate, Sister Adams, if a lion's chasing you to take off running and screaming, okay? But it's not appropriate to take off running and screaming if there ain't no lion chasing you. But you know what? When I would get up in those areas, I would feel like I was totally appropriate. Like whatever you said really was way up here, and I was way in, my, in the range of appropriateness for me to say, now listen here, Sister Adams, that was not right. And I would feel like I was totally, totally appropriate until two or three days later. <laughs> and then I would go, oh my God, I was way up here and appropriate was way down there. I wasn't nowhere close to appropriate. I was so inappropriate. I was unprofessional, inappropriate. I could have been fired or whatever, you know, depending on the circumstance. You know what I mean? But God had to show me you, when you're in those ways, and sister, uh, I heard somebody else one time say, God, don't ever let me do nothing when I'm up here that I can't live with when I get down here. And that is an honest to God truth. And if, you, if you've ever suffered anxiety disorders or anything like that, I don't know about normal women, <laughs> but I know those kind of things, you can do things that you just later on you think, oh my God, where was I? What was I thinking? Where was I at? I remember one time, I'm, she's smiling at me right now. I'm not going to call her out, but she told me she got mad. And I was like, no, not you. I couldn't even believe that. <laughs> but she would say she just went through a years where she was just mad all the time. But you know, it took God to deliver her from all that. It took God to show me three pages of how to overcome my emotions. It took God to show me how to overcome them. He began to deal with me. It's never appropriate. Never. It took three years, Sister Dolores, for him to get it through my head that it was never appropriate for me to say certain things, do certain things, treat people certain kinds of way. No matter what I feel like they did, it was never appropriate. Never appropriate to hit nobody. Never appropriate to say things you shouldn't say. Never appropriate. And it took three years for him to pound that in my head because I thought, well, if they if they did certain things, it was appropriate. If they hurt Brother Adams, if they disrespected the church, if they disrespected God, and God had to for three years pound it in my head. Not if they hurt you. Not if they hurt your family. Not if they hurt the church. Not if they hurt your the God himself. You are not in the position to stand up for yourself. Don't defend yourself. That's just pride. You let God be your defense. And he pounded that in my head over and over until now when I get all up and I know when I'm going, uh-oh, I'm going through my, uh-oh, you know, and my husband has seen me taking my pills. I have vitamins and supplements that I take to help me. But it, those are the days when I just have to ride through it. I know how to ride through it now. I know how to just give it to God. After 30 years, thank God, you don't see me going. I'm not on the headlines of the paper. Thank God he's kept me, Brother Gunter, because I could have been many days. I could have been on the headlines of, oh, piano player went off and killed some people or whatever. Road rage. Oh, God, I've been through it all. But let me tell you, God has kept me. It's only because of God. It wasn't because of me. I came from this. I came from a family that would that would go get their gun and shoot you if they didn't like you. I came from them redneck families down there. But God delivered me. God is helping me. God has kept me for 30 years. Can you imagine? Can you imagine God keeping me for 30 years and all, all these stuff going off in my head? Sometimes those voices go off in my head and I don't know who's talking about what. But it's like all this stuff is going on in my head and I'm not on no medication, you guys. I used to be on medication, but I'm not on medication either. And God has kept me for 30 years not on on medication, just on vitamin supplements. That's all I take. But God has helped me. And if he can help me, I know he can help you. I love the Lord. I appreciate the Lord for saving me. I just love him today. After all these years, he's still more precious to me. After all these years, <laughs> Still true and faithful is he Through the trials and tears His hand of mercy
chill again today for being here and be able to uh, <clears throat> enjoy what God has uh, made available for us. Amen. It's the day that the Lord has made. We can rejoice in it and and be glad <clears throat> and thankful for uh, how God is able to uh, talk to us through dreams and, and through uh, other uh, means of communication. He's able to help us. You can use the scripture in Job here today, alluded to the Job uh, in Job 33, uh, where uh, God was wanting to seal instructions in his life. Praise God. In verse 15, Job 14, Job 33, 14 says, uh, For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. So while God is speaking, <coughs> men's are not uh, taking place, or not being able to translate what God is trying to uh, give to them. He says, but uh, in a dream then, God goes to the next steps in a dream, in a vision of night when deep sleep falleth upon men and slumbering upon the beds. Then he opened the ears of men and sealeth their instruction. Why well, got them sleep? You'll give them a dream. He seals the instructions in the, the, the heart and mind of man that he may withdraw man from his purpose. Yeah. <laughs> And hide pride from man. God is trying to, God is trying to stop man from going into the ditch, and trying to hide his purposes from him. Uh, to keep it back, he goes on to tell you what it is to keep keep it back his soul from the pit, that is the grave, and his life from perishing by the sword. He is chasing also with pain upon his bed, and the multitude of his bone with strong pain, so that his life abhorred bread. And his soul dainty meat. His flesh is consumed away and it keeps going on. But the whole point that I'm wanting to stress is that God goes through a lot of things to, to try to turn us. That's right. Try to turn us from our purpose. Because our purpose is not important. That's right. It's God's purpose. Amen. Amen. It's God's purpose. What's in was important, but at the time we think ours is just the most important right. thing it is. Mm -hmm. And God knows better and best. Right. And, uh, and so we're thankful of the dream. And it's also I glean from that dream is that sometimes we perceive things that it's not there. This is a really this is really a tedious walk. Why well, you gotta move slow and careful. Right. And this salvation, people just take everything and just bunch it up and throw it in the big basket and just poof, make it something. But this is a real needlework operation. <coughs> it's not a sewing machine. <coughs> Zipping stuff. This is needlework. Fine work. That's what that shows there where uh Bible said that the bride there in the hundred, I think it's Psalm 144, I think he said he, she goes before the king in needlework. Is that right? You got to put the end in front of the, there you go. Now we might come up with it. Amen. Uh, yeah, Psalms 45, 14. She, she, she's brought to, uh, to the Lord and needlework. Let's go up a little bit here. Uh, verse uh, uh, verse 13, the king's daughter is glorious, is all glorious within. Her clothing is of raw gold. She shall be brought unto the king in raiments of needlework. She, this church that God is putting together, <coughs> This woman, this bride that he's fixing up. Revelation 19 and 6, 7 says, Rejoice and be glad for the marriage of the Lord has come and his wife has made herself ready. But see, 
this readiness that's taking place there is being done in a in in, in a in a in a real very tedious way. Very tedious way. And then God chooses the church to this institution to gather the people together and put them together in this in this in this miraculous way. All backgrounds, all cultures, all upbringing. You tell me that ain't need a work. Amen. You just think about all the cultures and backgrounds where you've been, I've been, and then God coming here to begin to uh, comp comp uh, uh, compact and, and fit us and knit us. Yeah, yeah God. That scripture there, she said, knitted and fitted and compacted together. God begins to be able to put all these spirits and, and all these attitudes and characters and uh, and begin to formulate them and blend them yeah. where they fit and work together. That's a job. That's a job for Jesus. Amen. It's, 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 it's needlework. See, but she's going to be brought to the Lord and and, and